already talked about the primitive variable types that Python provides. Python provides a, a variety of higher level types of uh, variables. Uh, one type is uh, array-like structures, uh, and there are two distinct uh, versions. One is a list and one is a tuple. So both lists and tuples are uh, zero index. They provide an ordering for a set of uh, things. Uh, the individual elements can be anything. So they can be primitive variables or they can be uh, objects that can actually be lists in and of themselves. Also important uh, here is that uh, the, the elements within a single uh, list or tuple uh, can be heterogeneous, meaning I can have a mixture of integers and strings uh, or other objects. The key difference between uh, a list and a tuple is that lists are mutable. So once we've created a list, we can make changes to, to the individual items within the list. Uh, or we can uh, change the, the length of the list, add items to the end of it. On the other hand, uh, tuples are immutable. So once we've created them, we, we, will, uh, we, we cannot make changes to them, and Python will throw an error if you try to do that. Uh, which one you use depends on uh, what kind of a context you're in, and you'll, you'll get used to uh, which one is appropriate in the different contexts. Uh, as we go here. All right, I've already created a, a notebook uh, to do our demonstration in. So let's uh, create a little bit of markdown first. Or a collection of items. Explicitly select that to be a markdown and execute that. So we have uh, a nice label. Um, and let's actually do another uh, markdown here. You can also have other text uh, within the context of a markdown cell, and it just gets displayed at uh, the, the standard font size. Okay, so let's start with, with a list of integers. So these are comma separated. Uh, keep in mind that we have uh, square brackets that are, that are bracketing lists. So this tells Python that you're dealing with a list and not a tuple. So now that we've declared that, we can do things like print out the list itself. We can also access individual uh, items within the list. So I can either, if I execute this bit of uh, code here, then Python will evaluate that and just uh, show me what the uh, output is, what the return value is. Uh, so that I could also print out this, this value here. I'm just taking a shortcut at this stage. So, so notice that uh, I'm printing, we're, we're returning the item three from the list, but counting from zero. So zero, one, two, and three. So, so value five is what we expected here. It's also possible to uh, index from the end of a list. So if I provide a, a negative one as the index value, it gives me the last element of, of a list. So there's there's nine. I can also uh, walk from right to left. So an index of negative two doesn't give me the last item, but it gives me the, the second to last uh, item in the list. The list is also mutable. So let's change element two. Uh, so that's zero, one, two. If the value is currently 18. We're going to change that to 100. And uh, we'll print out the, the resulting list. And, and there we go. So, so the list is, the elements are the same except for that number two item, uh, which has changed to 100. So in, in addition to being able to extract individual items from a list, we can also extract what Python calls uh, slices from a list. So let me give a couple of examples of that. So my list colon three. So what this uh, says is give me everything uh, starting, from, uh, starting from the beginning of the list up to but not including element three 
uh, of the list. So zero, one, oops, sorry, zero, one, two, three. So what we're expecting from this is to, to a result which is a list that contains just three, seven, and 100. And there we go. We can also ask for a range. So if I say one colon four, this says, give me a new list which contains elements starting from location one up to, but not including four. So uh, zero, we're gonna start with one, two, three, but not include the, that fourth item, the nine there. And in this type of indexing, you're going to see very consistently throughout uh, Python. And there, there are, takes a little bit of getting used to, but there are good reasons for uh, including the, the thing on the left, but excluding the thing on the right. We can also ask other questions, such as the length of the list. So the, the len function, uh, we'll, we'll do this for a variety of array-like uh, objects. So that gives me a five, which is what I expect. Lists don't have to be integers. We can, we can give it a set of strings. And for fun, let's uh, add a value at the end, which is a float. Oops, and now we'll execute that. So printing, printing that list gives me, gives me the new list. And with these heterogeneous lists, uh, sometimes they can get us into trouble, but often they're, they're quite useful from a programming uh, perspective. Okay, so let's, let's flip over now and start looking at tuples. So this is our other array like uh, structure that, uh, that Python provides us. And uh, instead of using square brackets, we use uh, parentheses. So 19, 27, 3, 18. So now we're creating a, a tuple that uh, contains four items. And let's go ahead and print that out. And, and there it is. We're just as with lists, we can index individual values. So uh, my tuple two will give me three, uh, or I can index from the, the back end of the, uh, of the tuple. However, let's try this with an array, I can reassign a value. So my tuple one, we're going to try to set uh, element one to the value of seven. I'll execute that and you'll see that uh, Python throws an error. And, and this comes from the fact that tuples are immutable. All right, final point, just as with lists, we can also ask what the length of a, of a tuple is. Okay, so that's a quick introduction to the, the built-in array-like things that Python uh, provides us. And we'll see over the next uh, week and a half, uh, a couple of other uh, array-like uh, structures that, uh, that, that are quite useful when we start dealing with the machine learning side of things.